six, six, forty-seven. Okay. Hold the meeting to order. Um, focus of this meeting: we have a lot of discussion about board outreach and other board governance things, our goals, etc. Um, we have to approve the annual agenda as well, which we discussed last month, and um, I need a. Meeting evaluator, if someone would be willing to volunteer to see that this meeting's evaluated, that'd be great. Thank I'll you, Ann. What, what are we going to do? There's a that form one? in the back of that book. Which book is I actually threw a copy in the orange oh, you get for one? you just to oh, save you the hassle of having good. to dig through somewhere. It should be somewhere in there. Might be on, might be on the know, top. And on the board since I was 23, it's time. Here. Have you never done it? No, I've done this many oh. times. She does. She's, yeah. she's like the only person who volunteers. <laughs> Next time. Without, Without a dirty word. Without a dirty word. Do you not like talking to No, no I don't. Exactly. I don't like to go much. Actually, it's strategic. I volunteer a certain number of times a year. And you don't have to I pace it out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so we have no public for public comment, so let's move on to the uh, approval of annual agenda, which... Um, we did talk about last time, and we made a number of changes, um, which are reflected upon the document that we have now. Um, Paul, do you want to present that <coughs> in any way? Yeah. Um, so I think, let's see, we added uh, the, some of the governance in, and then we added the, the uh, let's see, the, hmm, I don't remember. I think we added the, one of the, Discussions earlier on for the budget stuff, and yep. then um, otherwise, I think we removed quite a bit of things. We, <laughs> we added in the discussion of the negotiations mm -hmm. for right. the unions, and then the ends a lot of the ends monitoring the old direct monitoring. Right. Which right. Doing mm -hmm. right. The one question, because um, I was making the changes from what the board had suggested um, last time, is in the very last column on that June eighth. Um, if you go down to ENDS Monitoring, it has RTCC Senior Profile. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know if that made more sense now being over on um, in May 11th, just because that's an RTCC meeting, or mm -hmm. do we want to? Did you want to keep it separate? That was the only odd question I had after looking at what people had suggested last time. But they have the data that they need by then, though. Uh, in terms of the senior profile, they should. Well, then that would make sense. Yeah. That makes um, a lot. The sense. only yeah, so that doesn't overlap with their open house then, because usually the RTCC meeting is on the open house, but we could do it on this, the board meeting instead, which would, okay. So we're going to move that? So we'll move it to May yeah. 11th. And when is the open house? It's not May 11th, I assume. It's always a Thursday, yeah. and I can't remember if it's the first or second Thursday of May. Yeah, that's right. Usually right around the 9th or something. Yeah. Uh, So we'll just separate the RTCC meeting from that open house then. We, so we did move, traditionally, the high school ends monitoring has been this month, September. We moved it to October because the oh, SBAC right. results come out right around when our meeting is. So last year, um, it was just, it wasn't able to do a full report. So we've moved that to October now. And because of that, we moved some of the policy governance trainings. We're having one today, even though we had one last month. So we'll try to separate those out going forward, but it just seemed like next meeting will be really long if we tried to do everything. So it's not listed. Well, what is it? What's the policy governance. Policy governance. That was one thing that we, um, if you... No, it's not on here it's now. It's not on here. Oh, yes, it is. Right up in it's board, development. board development. Yeah. There's yeah. three of them listed. Right, right. But we're going to do one today? Yep. That's why I, we told you to bring the policies. Right. Yeah. But, it's but it's not listed yet. Yeah. You're right. September. It's not. It used to be up on October. It was listed, so we probably took it oh, off. and so you took it off and just forgot. Probably, yeah. yeah. Put it back. Mm -hmm. So I can actually add it. Um, that was one of the other questions is... Um, did you want policy governance in for every meeting, or? 
for we training? We originally talked about doing it four times a year. Um, besides having some sort of workshop, which will be another evening workshop, maybe with Val or someone else like that. Um, mm -hmm. We can change that if we decide that we need to have more or less than four. Mm -hmm. But I think four is about, you know, we can aim for four. And, and if, we, if something comes up or we feel like we're not adequate in the governance that we're doing, I think we certainly can add more. There's an email um, from um, from Rutland. Um, oh, the Rutland. Yeah, yeah. yeah she had, they'd come over and participated when we had Miriam Carver here, and so oh, they yeah. were pulling one together um, to see if anybody else was interested. There was mm -hmm. a date, but it's coming pretty quick. Yeah. 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 Fifteenth of September. September. Well, that would be a Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, it was on a weekend. Oh. Yeah. That's yeah. different. It's an odd time to have it. Yeah. <laughs> But they were trying to, trying to fill out the ranks, so they'd kind of open it up to anybody mm -hmm. else that wanted to participate, kind of follow the model we set. That's great. Mm -hmm. Do you know who they're going to be there? It was a name of an expert. Um, Miriam apparently is not doing them anymore um, at all. Um, so it was somebody that she had recommended to them. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not somebody I'm familiar with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's write that down. <laughs> so, um, are there any other changes that people see that need to be made to this annual agenda? Do we feel comfortable approving it today with these changes, or should, do we need to talk about it again? Is there a problem with approving it today and then amending it later? I mean, if, if something, I mean, it seems reasonable now, but if something comes up and we're like, oh, wow, we should really have that on, like, is, I don't, is this I the don't, only time of the year that we can have, that we can I think it? these just set parameters. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and it's right. really a work in progress depending exactly. on what comes so, up. So, great, wonderful. Yeah. Okay. I think it's good. Yeah. Okay. Good as is. Yep, good okay. to go. <laughs> so I have a motion then to approve the annual agenda as as amended. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So we have our annual agenda, at least in some form. Um, next is the board outreach discussion. So we launched, um, as everyone knows, you know, the an outreach sort of um, to the community to just try to gather data and input as to where we're being successful and where we're not, and um, just trying to be a little more transparent as a board. So that you guys all posted <laughs> one on July 4th, and so I asked Anne to present to us what, what were sort of the trends, um, both of suggestions and complaints or grievances that people um, had for right. us to know. Well. Um, I think there were a lot of the trends were uh, people feel like we could do better at uh, foreign language or language instruction by having more of that earlier. Mm. Some folks even suggested preschool. Um, and, uh, be, be, and they like cited some brain development research and things like that. Um, better communication came up a couple times for things we could do better. Between um, ourselves or between the schools? Between the, the schools and the community, um, the community not knowing well enough what's going on with the schools. I'll tell you, I did not know when the last day of school was until I got the menu. Really? Yes. Mm. <laughs> and I'm on the school board. <laughs> I have a child in the school system. And it, yeah. Yes. Huh. Okay, so... Yeah, that's a good point. We're <laughs> not the only the school district doing badly at that, but that doesn't yes, mean. Yes, exactly. It was yeah. And then it, and when it was set, I have no idea. And then there were different, like, different, like, 
RTCC yeah. had a different day, and the high school mm -hmm. had a different day, and the elementary school, and it just was never communicated from our school when our last day was until can, we got the menu. I can tell and you, like, though, oh, looks like we're from managing a staff of people with <laughs> small children, we weren't the only school district not communicating that. But there's a and or about when the first day of school starts. I actually had to help people look that up online several times. Well, well, the first day, the first day of school you can look up online. That doesn't change, right? right? The, the last day of school changes. It does, and that throws people for a loop and really can anyway, get off track. Players. Sorry, okay. we had four snow days, and we are technically supposed to make up a couple, but there's quite a lot of discussion whether we were or won't. <laughs> yeah, but it's important, <laughs> right? <Lane? laughs> yeah. It's important to put to be able to put that out there, you know, to say because we had this snow day, the last day of school is now. Simple for me. Simple, but <laughs> for the wasn't you know. for the rest of the people. <laughs> 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 um, another thing that uh, people were concerned, <clears throat> people really liked um, that kids seem to be gaining confidence and improving their skills. The ones that they are encountering, um, they people really liked the. Um, they thought we needed to really work harder at inclusiveness and helping students understand what that means and cost cr and that we should really work more on cross cultural awareness um, but that I mean that's hard yeah none of these things are easy and there's a there certainly were um, very positive comments in the mix um, you know how one respondent said one of the things that we need to know as a district is kids need to learn to be responsible and they shouldn't be running a show at, show at school. But another par person said, these are challenging times for educators and your work is important. That's what they wanted our schools to know. Hmm. So um, nice. one of them, which there's one here that I liked, I wanted to point it out to you because it was a child. Response 13 was a child. So. I like school. I like school was her. Well, I want the teachers to What know. she wants the teachers to know. And that she wants to learn more about, she wants more mu musical instruments in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess going forward, so the next step, so we've got this compendium of information, of all, of, you know, it's all over the place. Um, all across the board, really, all types of input. Yeah. We, what do we do with it? And, you know, so what are our next steps? Well, I don't, I think that there was value in asking the questions in and of themselves. Because if we're, if all the communication we do is out, we're not. Mm -hmm. Right, but, but when you, someone know. fills out a survey, they expect right. like that, that information to be used somehow. I know. <clears throat> and so... In my mind, um, the, the two, if we, I think if we were to collate the July 4th with mm -hmm. the, the first one, I don't remember the date uh, of that, was it Memorial? June. Or, Memorial Day weekend. Was, it Memorial was Day? that um, I don't remember what block... It was, party. it was like the first yeah. week of June, I think. First week of June, that's what it was. If we collate the two, I, I don't know that there's much the same. No. They, they're, it's kind of a, all over the place. It's it's very personalized. Mm -hmm. So I've not really seen any trends to, to, to say that it's data that can be used necessarily unless there's something that is an outlier that we look at and as a group we right. come to a consensus that, yes, this one thing that this person brought up is, is a particular issue. I don't know that it's right. actionable material. No. I think maybe we take it, we set it aside, and then we ask the same questions again, um, roughly the same time period this coming year, and then we look at the data and see if there are trends. Consistent trends. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. right, I, I, at least that's my standpoint. Mm -hmm. right. I didn't see anything that jumped out at me. It was like, oh, this guy's saying almost the same thing that this guy's mm. saying. And this girl saying the same thing that this other guy is saying. I, I didn't see anything like that. But it, it was like, you know, some of them were just polar opposites. Polar right. opposites. Absolutely. Polar opposites. Right. Is, 
you know, unless until you can find that as a trend, I don't Ooh. know if there's anything. But that that it's might be your trend is consistency. Yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah, why? Yeah, the, the, that might be yeah, the question. If you do it next year, we still find that there's polar opposites. Polar opposites. We'll realize that you know there's are from student to student. The the, the uh, there is a gap. One student right. is having very good time, another student is not, or whatever. That might be, like you said, that might be the... Why isn't there more consistency? And right? there, why, why wouldn't there be consistency? Is there some sort point. of a cultural gap here <laughs> between different families, you know, different backgrounds? Are there but folks... you're not really going to know that. You, you're, you're not. not right. You're certainly not. You're not but if that, but there continues to be that, <laughs> maybe there's still a culture that's not... It speaks to that in some way, but you're not talking to the same people from year to year. Well, either. I'm wondering if it would make sense to target school by school. So I think it has to be towards the end of the school year just right. because it's a new situation every year. But so say April at some, you know, and I hate to have it as part of something fun mm -hmm. where no one wants to take the time. Right. But say something at Brookfield School at the end of the day or whatever, we ask the parents to, to fill out the survey and then at Braintree and maybe mm -hmm. then we'd have a little bit more actionable data to, to sort of reflect on. Like, like an ice cream social to, mm -hmm. to try to, you know, entice them to, to stay or to come by to talk to the school board and and do that. I like that idea. Kind of like an end of year exit interview or something. Something to do because I mean if you just say we're going to have a meeting come, you know, talk to us. They're going to no. have kids in Right. No, but with, if you with kids too, you could say what was the hardest thing about this year for you. Yeah, but that's but that's not, not informative no. for us. But you know, I like your idea. I'm wondering whether we could, because <laughs> a lot of pa parents aren't going to come back, especially right. ones who who are busy in the evenings and this and that. Mm -hmm. You know, we're only going to get a, a s <laughs> sort of a select section. Mm -hmm. So, but maybe if it's after something like mm -hmm. a little league game or a concert or a I don't know or yeah. maybe we give it out before the concert mm -hmm. and you know so they have some they're waiting there for their kid to come you know yeah. they could mm -hmm. as they're sitting there they fill it out on their phone if it's a if it's a you know a, a survey monkey type thing mm -hmm. we, yeah as they come in you give them a business card with the survey they, yep. just, they yep. just go into it and, and as they're, they're sitting si there I just okay <laughs> I'm going back to, so this looks like I think we need to back up right. and look at what our role is and why we're linking with the community. Mm -hmm. And what I'm hearing is what the individual schools might want to, and it's all about parent feedback. Mm -hmm. And we are more than just parent feedback. I, I don't, I'm not saying it's parent feedback no, at all. I'm saying, saying. We're, we're trying to reflect upon how we are achieving our ends, right? right. Our goals. And how the community feels about the job we are doing as a district. The only reason I suggested going to schools is that then we can sort of say, okay, so maybe Braintree is different than Brookfield, and maybe the way we're doing things in Randolph is different than we're doing at the Randolph High School. Like, because these, so far, our, our surveys have been everyone, community, parents, everything, which, mm -hmm. which I think is great. Um, but we have no way to see whether it tells us any usable information. And the sheer number of respondents who refuse to even do the questionnaire because they're like, I don't know anything about the schools at all. Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a student in the school. Right. I don't want to. I haven't. I, don't have any idea about I don't think it. I have any right. contact. So what do you think? And I mean, if you look we? at our so create and maintain a linkage between the ownership and the operational organization right. to represent the informed voice of the owners. This linkage will include. Seeking input mm -hmm. regarding owner values on issues of ends and ethics. So you're so we're so that's where we need to sort of be engaging them on. Here's where we're. This is because because we're asking them the questions we're asking them need to be sort of are right. we, are we is it getting, too open ended? Yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's more it can be operational, which is not really our purview. It's we're not. saying these are the ends that we put out to the schools to meet and this is we need to go out to the community and let them know here's where we are mm -hmm. this is where we're where we are with our 
It's in the, at the elementary level, at this school, at that school, at that school. And it needs to be more than just parents. Mm -hmm. And that's where, as we, you know, I, I think it's a fairly, I think we need, still need to sort of think about how we're going out. And remember Val said, you know, you can go to the Rotary mm -hmm. Club, you can go to the Chamber, you can go around to these different organizations to sort of get their feel, local employers who are employing but some of our students. We need their input to set our ends, which right. is part of exactly. what we're doing. Exactly, and we need to have that give and take. Are we still, are we on track with our ends? That's the, that's the why right. of why we're going out. The community relations piece, I think, is important, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure it's the role of the board. Mm -hmm. That might be more the role of the individual schools or the superintendent's role in terms of, I want to see if we're, meet, you know, communicating well mm -hmm. enough and people know when school ends or, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. That's an operational. That's not how, how we're doing toward our ends because we're way up here and I think we need to keep our focus on that or we're going to get sidetracked right. into, you know, how people are feeling and is, how is brain tree different from that. Mm -hmm. I think we need to focus on our kids learning and, mm -hmm. and learning how to read and do math and Science or maybe they don't study. want them to learn how to read. Maybe they want them to learn to ice skate. I mean, like, right, we right. should be eliciting that information. Right. right. Are we on track with sort of where we're focusing our, our push for our direction to him to say, these are the outcomes we want you to have? And that was, what I was going to say, and you, you said it beautifully, um, part of the responsibility is you have to go back and revisit the ends. And this is exactly. one of the ways that you mm -hmm. do it. Um, Lots of times, you know, they, they'll stay static for a long time, but if there are social changes or social pressure changes within a community or across the country or the mm -hmm. state, you know, those, those may change. But you brought up a very valid point as well, is that because our, especially at the elementary level, the schools are in such different communities mm -hmm. um, and serve uh, such different populations of students, is the ends might be different a little bit, depending upon, you know, which community you're in and what, what their current needs are. And that could definitely be why this seems so scattered, mm -hmm. because it's all three communities. Because yep. each of these were at events for the community. It's not Quite like large. a Randolph thing. It was mm -hmm. it was everybody was involved. I mean, the parade. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was there was so many people from Massachusetts, Maine, and New yes. Hampshire <laughs> that it was difficult to find somebody that lived really in was. the area. I mean, there was people from all over. Wow. So um, I, I think that's. That's probably a good point. That's why it's so scattered. I think there was somebody who took our questionnaire and said they're going to mail it back to Williamstown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, we're, and we're not, I, I, I wonder if we want to sort of look at sort of getting a cross section. And I don't know if there are events in Braintree or Brookfield mm -hmm. that are big community events that rent, you know, that would be a good place to gather. Don't that have information a lot of, or, I have a lot of community events in Braintree. I mean, we could do town meetings. Braintree's starting to get folks to course, show. School. Yeah. Feel people probably show mm -hmm. Braintree. Yeah, they go to the other towns. A larger cross-section like, of the entire yeah. community is town meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, school or town meeting. Yeah. I'm wondering if next time as we do this, um, yeah, town meeting, we, have like 60 people we, show, you know. we identify who the person is, not by, per, uh, mm -hmm. by individual, but by group. So we come up with the groups, because uh, one of the things we were discussing mm -hmm. is do we want to target the outreach? And so if we say that parent, uh, business owner, um, senior center, I senior, mean, well, mm -hmm. yeah, but identify who, what we consider groups are, and right. then we'll start lumping them in so that we can see what the perceptions are amongst different groups. Mm -hmm. And then we could use that to say if amongst the business owners we know, or business, people that self-identify as a businessman or a woman, um, we can go then go to Rory Club and say, this is some stuff we're noticing from people. What were you noticing? Because Rory Club is business. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe that we can help us um, for our reach in, in that sense. But right now, when it's all scattered, it, it wasn't really helpful. I, I think that's the lesson we learned is the mm -hmm. way we went about it wasn't mm -hmm. necessarily helpful. Right. Just because the data is kind of scattered. It's just brain. so scattered. Yeah. It's too open ended. I mean, the only you thing. You probably could almost put you know, your the town of residence on there, too. Mm -hmm. 
choose. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You can locate them whether it's parents from Brookfield. Right. You can mm -hmm. see parent right. Brookfield. Yeah. Right. So if you had like you know like three check you know check boxes, you would pick a you know, town and then a category whether it's business, parent, or no. student or, or student. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Teacher. But, or, we had several teachers fill out several. Or just yeah. or even multiple categories because you could very well be a business owner in Randolph and a parent yeah. in Brookfield. Right. Yeah. The only last piece that I would offer is that um, when patterns, if you get to the point where there's patterns that are emerging, where where it's possible, it's not always, um, try to always tie it back to some objective data to see mm -hmm. if, you know, that, that gives you the differentiation. Is this perception? Do we have a perception problem here, um, which can be pretty critical, or do we have a reality mm -hmm. problem here, right? What, what's the data telling us? Uh, because how you treat either of those, how you go after those in terms of pursuit to make things a little bit better is different. Right. Yep. No, actually, we're doing really we're re doing really well here, but the perception, for whatever perception. reason, is negative, mm -hmm. or or the perception's really positive, and we're really not doing <laughs> too well here. I mean, right. so it's that that's important to kind of suss out if you can. Um, we'll get there. And so it sounds like, to summarize, so we're interested in, in furthering this project, but we mm -hmm. need to better define our goals for mm -hmm. what what type yep. of information we're trying to elicit. And we want to, you know, add these check boxes so that we can better sort of define who, who, who is the uh, respondent, and and what else? What else do we want to? I wanna... think we need to have. I mean, we've had these ends for quite a while now, mm -hmm. um, and we've had ends reports, which we right. sort of put together in that. Mm -hmm piece that goes out to the, at the town meetings, we right. sort of have a, a little bit of a, but I wonder if we're finally at, and this is a question for me, are we at the point where we can, our data is still not really. Last year, um, as far as I can tell, you would have to tell me I wasn't here before, but last mm -hmm. year I think was a dramatic shift in terms of the end report. You had a had an actual physical report in your hands. It wasn't just data that tried to explain mm -hmm. um, trends. Um, it did a attempted to do a shift to objective data, um, so that you know stuff that was was reliable and valid, and um, and that was a first attempt at it. Uh, but the basics of what you have in your your goals, your vision statement, um, your ends, um, those basics would still be true. Um, doesn't mean that they couldn't be tweaked. Um, doesn't mean that more could be added or even some taken away. Um, but uh, I, I think that they would still be true. So if you're worried about having to so revamp I, everything. Well, what I'm thinking is what might be useful is to have some sort of, you know, short, not, not too long, but mm -hmm. this is what you told us were the things that were important that you wanted mm -hmm. students to have for skills. This is what the district came up with for how you know the benchmarks of what we were gonna look at. And here we this is how we are in terms of how close we've come. Mm -hmm. Are we on track? Is this is this where communities want us to be? Is or still it, yeah, is this still relevant? Is this and and I think rather than just finding one location, mm -hmm. I think we you know we go to several different places. Remember Val said you don't have to do it in a board meeting here mm -hmm. that, you know, go to, you know, a chamber meeting and mm -hmm. get on their agenda and say, okay, this is where we're at. But what we need is we're all lay people, you know, we're not educators. At this point, I don't feel like I could say, this is where we are, this is on our ends. You know, we would, it would mean sort of getting something that's digestible, that's not too overwhelming for a non-educator to Could. sort of understand to say, this is where we said we were going to try and be, and maybe we break right. it down by, in the elementary schools, mm -hmm. this is where we said we wanted to be, this is how we're measuring right. it, um, and just, because that's what we need to go out to the community for, mm -hmm. is to say, this is where we are, this is what we've, we've 
plan because it's been 10, 15 Even, years almost since right. we've revisited those ends. Are we on track? This is what we're using to measure and this even is where so we much. are. Even, even perhaps not even say this is where students are now, but even but say when we set out with these ends, these were the values that our community had. Are these still is this, still is this still are these things important to our community still and if and if these things are not on target to what you value how what would what changes should be made kind of i mean yeah i mean the simple ends you know that's the ends that we came up with as communities whenever mm -hmm. that was you know we could definitely publish you know this in the paper and other places, website and what have you, and say this: these were our, our, the goals we set as the important core values of our educational system. You know, are these still the ones we want to focus on? You know, is there something we should add? Right. You know, the other thing I think here we have a perfect opportunity because October is the ends report by the high school. Mm -hmm. Let's right. it, let's broadcast that. Mm -hmm. This is when anyone who right. wants to know how the high school is right, yes. doing Absolutely. come. Mm -hmm. And it's the first part of our meeting, you know, so it, you don't have to wait till 8 o'clock right. for it to happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sit and down and hear it. Right. Be, uh, that, that ends report, I always do a district wide anyway. It's mm -hmm. the elementary, it's the high mm -hmm. school, it's the district right. as a whole. It's, yeah. So, yeah. so it's being held in Brookfield, mm -hmm. that meeting, I, I think, next so. month. Yeah. You know, but let's, let's put that out in the Herald and on the website. I was going to say, this do you want to take a full page ad out on the, uh, in the Herald, um, try to get people's attention, and then maybe try to get, uh, so one week to take the ad out, and then another week try to get, uh, just go down and talk to a reporter, one of them, and try to get them to discuss it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. a great idea. I think that's a more effective way to yeah. say this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Then, right. then going out and, and like rehashing that. Right. Or like regurgitating right. that. Right. Get it from the horse's mouth. The, the, right. the principals yeah. and administrators right. who are. Will they all be there? Typically, what we did last year, it was me doing the big overview because mm -hmm. they come, like Jason just did, mm -hmm. right. they come right. to the smaller meetings along the way to present just their schools. Um, October's a good time because you've got all the, like I said, I, I, I focus in on the objective testing. You've got all the objective testing that's come in. Um, we've got the S back across all the grades that take it, you know, three to nine. Um, science still doesn't exist as far as the state because they haven't given us any data yet. Um, for the two years that they've run their new science exam. But we've got the AP scores, we've got the SATs, we've got the ACTs, which are all things worth worth taking a peek at um, in terms of overall health. Um, starting with this year, so uh, that data will probably be coming into play as uh, the year gets a little bit later and the principals are coming to present. They've also um, been given a mandate that they're using the interim assessments, um, which provide a lot more detail into where the students are, are, are strong and weak, as well as to track my progress. Um, so we've got those as well, um, kind of on the internal side. Um, the elementaries also have their common formative assessments that they've put together. It does kind of the same thing that track my progress in the interims do, but it's a little bit more tailored to what they're expecting to see from the kids than um, just common core. So there's quite a bit of data there. Um, right. And, you know, I think it's worth listening to. Right. So right. I, I like Paul's idea of having, having a full page ad, yeah. you know, and then mm -hmm. following it up with the mm -hmm. next week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if nothing else, it'll get them to, because there are quite a few that right. do watch on cable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah. I like your idea of, of publishing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think calling it the ends would, would sound kind of strange. But yeah. these are our goals, right. Is this still relevant? If you have opinions on what the schools should be teaching mm -hmm. to meet these goals, or not to meet these goals, or if you have opinions on what our goals should be. These are the core values can, of you our schools. You system. can contact your school board member. There is, mm -hmm. I not, that not about, no. not the logistics of it, no, that's theirs. Right. Dep <laughs> depending upon how big a project mm -hmm. you want that to be and mm -hmm. how much involvement. Mm -hmm. um, if you're at the, a point where you think that that right. uh, statement needs to be revisited in whole, mm -hmm. There's I'm, a facilitated, so. there, well, that's a question for you. There's an easy facilitated process for it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're going to ask the other people. Yeah. 
it's fine. We, we put a lot of structures in yeah. place this year with the budget. <laughs> based on uh, that. Based on that. that. So that's the. And that's my, been my hesitation. To but if it changes a little. But the only thing I would, we in my mind, the only thing that I would see coming out of it, if you're looking at this stuff mm -hmm. and listening to the news, mm -hmm. it, it's going to be a cultural awareness type stuff. Mm -hmm. like that social justice type stuff is the only thing that we, I mean, we got social studies, but I don't know that that speaks to the, Work. what people are kind of hammering up, like, the legislature just passed that we have right that we have to do that so that would probably need to right. somehow mm -hmm. fit in here right that's the only thing that's that i could see somebody mm -hmm. saying that needs to be added in there that isn't there because otherwise even maybe everything the, is i mean i don't know what's not covered. it could be maybe a data point under life skills yeah. right you know, life skills coping or social and, studies or communication right right i mean it, it could be any of those or even um from our survey here there's a lot of focus on foreign language maybe our community considers that to be a life skill now yeah you know, I don't know. Okay, so to sum up this discussion, <laughs> um, we will. So we don't have a communications person now. Ben Merrill left. Do we have someone else ben, who would be? Ben is still because he's under contract. Um, he's he's still primarily kind of web management. That's mm -hmm. the primary piece of his salary. He's doing it from Georgia. He comes in once uh, once a month. He mm -hmm. flies in and checks on his places. But it's something that we probably want to talk about going forward after this year. Well, uh, yeah, I'm wondering, mm -hmm. like, if we wanted to put in a full page or you know, large ad in the Herald, who would? Take that responsibility. I can, and Ben still can too. He's okay. got those contacts. Yeah. Okay. Half a page would be yeah. Would be half funny. A, I think full page may be kind of obscene. Well, so. the only reason I said that is because the last couple of times we've gotten the paper, there's been full page ads like mm -hmm. on the back page. Of, like, yeah. Yeah. It was like, oh, that's odd. It just <laughs> they're not expensive either. So I don't know what a full is. But we <laughs> <laughs> don't take charge of that. Yeah. So that should that. be. Oh. The yeah, third does like, it every every couple of weeks if you like. Well, and I think the rest of us too. I mean, you should get the whole end of the I know they need to get the Herald, which I'm like, what? It's blasphemy. But anyway, <laughs> so um, they don't the get the news. Is that what you're? No, 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 no. People, Facebook, Front Porch mm -hmm. Forum. I think we should hit it up on a number mm -hmm. of fronts because Agreed. not everybody is I'm glad you found necessarily your reading. I, ha I have access <laughs> to all those, and, uh, so I'll, I'll like, send oh, no. it out on all. Yeah. 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 That would be great. And maybe post it on the different schools' websites. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I know the high school is sending out, we get these reminder emails if you're a parent at the high school, but I don't know if the elementary school You've gotten no email. They do. I'm making them use it this year. That was the school <laughs> messenger I bought two years ago. To, so it's actually it's in there. Email. It's in their emails this year that you've got you to use it at least. Yeah. <laughs> Zero. But I thought I should contact the principal before I brought it to the. <laughs> yeah, you should. But I haven't. Oh. Yes. So. so I saw her open house and I couldn't. I couldn't face to face. Or, 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 I didn't know when the last day of school. Email. Oh, so That's what I'm gonna do. So the ad will go on in the third. Yeah. Okay, and in the tenth, I'll contact Zoe and just give her a little verbal update, so she will be a little um, mini article. So. Okay. Um, okay. So besides that, is. What action do we want to take in, or do we want to take any action as far as getting input about the ads? So I wonder if, if we can get a number of people, although again, we're probably just going to get a smattering. Mm -hmm. um, you mean at the next school board meeting? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because I don't, um, but maybe at that point we figure out a way to just get feedback in terms of are we on track is does this you know that that can be sort of something that they I, I wonder if so we present um, what the, the second Monday of, of October we'll be doing the presentation what if uh, that Thursday um, we asked to put an insert in the paper in which it, it talks you have you know just I don't know a page or two of, of the data that you think well, you're, you're going to get an actual written report like you did last year as well right. as the presentation. So the if I abbreviate or, or limit the scope of the report, the report can just go out. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm wondering if that would be... Post a link on the, on the website or something. Yeah. 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 Yeah
yeah. you know, yeah. you could say. Well, I'm just totally thinking, cool. like, to get the most, cause, like, I, I don't like to go on to Facebook. I, I, don't, I don't like Facebook. Right, and right. So, it, it, no, I usually, think a lot of people will like that. I email it out school messenger. I can put it on front porch forum. Mm -hmm. It can go in the paper, if, and, and Zoe can, you know, take the parts that she, they think is pertinent to throw up there. Yeah. Ben can, can meld something together, too, huh. um, from, from what's in there. So. But I, I think it would be important that the Thursday after we have our meeting that there's bunch of information if we're trying to say come to our meeting come yeah. to our meeting it's so important it's so important and then Thursday after the meeting <laughs> and it's 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 good context because hey um, thank you for the the big big budget increase last exactly. year. Right. right this is the reason and this is what we're using it for these are the areas that we're doing really well because of what you've given us um, in previous years again the impact of last year's budget won't be felt um, until end of this year earliest but also yeah and this is these are the areas that we've we've known have been weak for a while and this is what we're doing about it because it adds that context mm -hmm. to the conversation we're not running around clueless in terms of what we're deciding to do with with the budget that's coming in so I almost think maybe if we do another survey, maybe we need to have more specific questions mm -hmm. and don't leave them so open ended. I think, you're right. I think so. Right. Absolutely. Is, you know, you leave it open ended, they're going to give you that range of. Because <laughs> then you can tally response. things. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So if sure. you, you know, narrow it down, at least then maybe we could find some common trends. If, if I can find it again, um, I sent it, I think, the first year, um, but I, I'll send it around to the board. There was a massive survey, which actually probably about 60% of the district did every year, um, that the PTO at Marblehead mm -hmm. had put together. I had two folks that actually um, had advanced degrees in putting those types of surveys together that built it. Um, if you guys want to see those just as possibilities to rip questions from it. Yeah, why not? Um, that sounds good. But it, it is, it's not a, it's not an easy read. And, and by that, I mean, it's just, they, they had a lot of questions. They had a lot of things that, that we were targeting in on, trying to get information about. And the community was really good about filling, filling it out. But there might be some, some, different some ideas community. there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll see if so I can could, find the thing again. We could take what we like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, down to five questions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I think we need to, again, sort of focus it on our outcomes. Because right. that's what we're trying that's to get. That's our... The, yep. You know, if it's community relations, that's more... Yep. We might want to alert him mm -hmm. that, hey, we've heard this from people. Or, but that's not really... Our, our goal is, is the outcome. I think in the past we've gotten good responses from things that have kind of like rate, like rank things that have actual numerical outcomes in, instead of just this open-ended stuff that we did. Um, but also, I was thinking, I lost my thought, but um, we have had good results with that in the past. I mean, some people do turn those over and write books, but if they do, that's what they do. That's good. Yeah, it's all good. The Marblehead survey, what will be nice about it is even if you don't use any of the questions, you can see how they ordered them. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it might be a good model. Yeah, yeah that would be great. Yeah. All right, let's move on. We've got um, to discuss budget parameters in relation to negotiations. I guess that one's me. Yeah, um, that would be you. And probably can't get into specific numbers. We kind of touched on this a little bit with a discussion I think that Paul brought up at the last meeting, which I thought was really good. Um, one of the problems with negotiations, especially this year, is that negotiations won't start until the earliest in January. By that time, you guys have already had to do your vote on what the budget is and what's acceptable. So what it might be worth doing before we go into negotiations is um, for the board to make a determination in terms of, okay, in terms of a potential budget increase for the staff and staff salaries, this is the range that, as a board, we would be willing to accept. They don't need to know what that is. We can make that determination in the executive session as part of um, the strategic planning around it. Um, but it might help to put things a little bit in context and make things a little bit easier for the negotiating team. Obviously, if um, I think the, the main parameter around it would be, you know, if they're offering nothing. So if, if they're coming in and they're just asking for the sun, sky, and the moon, um, but not offering anything in turn that's of value to us towards meeting the ends, then this is the range. If they come in and say, hey, we're willing to offer these additional services, then it would come back to the board and say, hey, as, as we do in the negotiation piece. But it might be worth setting that, what, what that possible range could be. 
Um, the other piece that probably should be in there um, is what I've has to do with what I've traditionally done with the admin. I usually for their yearly raises, I just keep it the same as whatever the teachers are getting, or I try to budget for that. Mm -hmm. Um, that's something that you guys should have a say in as well in terms of, of, of doing the vote, um, you know, the, the, the average al the, for the admin salaries and other ways should be. Um, one of the reasons that I've always tried to keep it at what the teachers are is because the teachers um, union usually negotiates pretty hard, you know, so, you know, it's a fair, fair value that they're getting. And it keeps the separation um, between, you know, the admin work and, and the teaching work. It keeps whatever that gap is consistent over time. So. That's sense. kind of the thoughts. So, do you want to have an executive session um, at uh, of, on at a later month to discuss that? Yeah, I think I think as we get a little bit closer, um, that that would be good, so that we know kind of what we've got to work with going in. Um, kind so of January is the first meeting. Is that what you're? So thinking? they, I didn't see it yet. They they did come down and um, we're getting ready to get the letter together. Um, for because they have to, to provide a letter that, that's asking to, to meet with the board to, to enter into negotiations. Um, one of the things that they were going to add to that was uh, uh, keeping everything, the, the basic ground rules, the same as last time, which I thought was a good idea. I like the idea that it's open mm -hmm. so that we can talk with the community about what's mm -hmm. happening um, if, if we want to. But how things are working... Um, in terms of negotiation, all depends upon the state contract that they're mm -hmm. trying to negotiate. Right now, it looks like that is definitely going to go to, to fact-finding and probably arbitration. So the earliest, um, given if they go through the whole process, which it looks like they're going to do, um, that they might have an answer and something finalized is late December. Is that in regard to the health care? Yeah. yeah. Um, neither side, union nor us, um, would be interested in entering into any kind of negotiations before that point in time because we don't know what the cost impact is going to be. It's hard to negotiate about other things if you don't know how much the, the new health care changes um, may cost. So probably what will happen um, when that letter comes out is they'll be asking for the first meeting to be probably mid-January, um, and that's to make sure that it's after um, the they've agreed on the state contract. There is a date set in law um, that certain things have to have to happen in terms of that state contract. And I think the last piece, the arbitrations, I think it's December 15th that has to happen if, if they haven't reached agreement by then. How long the arbitrator gets to decide after that, I don't know. But um, so it looks like January it should be the earliest we'll be meeting. That's so one way or the other, there's going to be a statewide it's by law insurance by law, it's by law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to the deal. And I think I'm supposed to be. Yeah, well, they yeah. haven't. You're all they told me was there's you new know, arbitration or whatever, mm -hmm. mediation. So that's the only email that I've gotten. So. Yeah, they. Um, okay. And it's different depending upon whether the union sent it or whether the states. I hate to say it, but I believe the union a little bit more um, in terms <laughs> of what I, in terms of what I've been reading and, and, and what I know. Um, how things are set up is that. It's set for binding arbitration. That means at the very end, if people can't agree, mm -hmm. um, they take the last best offer um, from mm -hmm. both parties and they look at it and they decide it's all of this one or it's all of that one. Mm -hmm. So I think what the strategy is, again, no one said this, but kind of watching what's going on, is um, the state kind of put their best offer on the table and they're just kind of letting the days go by until mm -hmm. they get to arbitration and keeping their fingers crossed that that's the one the arbitrator decides mm -hmm. they want to mm -hmm. accept. Um, things could change in fact finding, but I think that's the strategy that's playing out right now. Um, so. All right, so we'll try to put that maybe on as budget negotiations get closer, then we'll put that on an uh, executive session. Yeah. Um, board governance budget. So you, I'm got, not you, sure. have to, you have 10 grand. And you usually have money left over. It was 20 uh, my first year right. here. But it was because you had planned in a previous year for a speaker. Right. Yeah. And we generally use that for personal policy governance training if you want to go to a workshop or a seminar. And, you know, as a group, policy governance training with a facilitator. Um, do we ha what do we have to do? Just discuss how we're using decide, that. Decide what you want to do. And yeah. we work with Robin to get it. We don't. I, you, you know, I, my sense is we'll probably have a, a, an evening session in March or something like that.
badges that we had in the you past. Know what I'd like to do. I'd like to ask some of these other boards that are doing policy mm -hmm. governance to to just even show us how are you monitoring and how are you monitoring just to see how it is. See if we can learn from Zwinuski's pretty far along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I want to see is and, the ends and these that, guys in Brandon. Somewhere. Yeah. Um, I think they've been doing policy governance now for a while. It would just be interesting to compare and see. Would well, it be yeah. worth going to us? I was going to say, should we just show up at their board meetings? <laughs> right, right. I mean, if we, yeah. we could contact them and say, you know, we'd love to see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, could right. we sit in on a board meeting? Right. Okay. Contingent of us. Or I bet we could watch one. Yeah. Or, or maybe even what I thought I might do is go look on their website and see if I can see some of their reports. Do you want to do the research on that and sure, get back to us? Sure. Okay. I, I don't know how quickly I can do that, but that's something that, that we that we're could take game. place in one of the policy governance trainings. We could have a, some okay, sort that, of we're in the long game because yeah. I think that was quite. The, well, we could if add. I follow this. It'll be it'll be quite ways away, but that's fine. We could we add you for November. Whenever no, you're ready, we too can soon. Too soon. <laughs> whenever you're ready, we could even move. We could even vote to move that up. Right. So, right. Let, yeah. Let me see. How okay. We, I think that would be. Great, a great use of our time. Sue had one. Oh, it was it Sue that gave us a drink? No, what was her name? Uh, Val. Val had one that she brought up on, on the stream when we were in the library. Yeah, Remember that? she said and she was, was gonna, so in depth. She's, and she was yeah, gonna send she was it to gonna us, send us a bunch of things. Yeah. And, and we never we didn't got get them. Yeah. Yeah, plus, it would be good for a model for me, too, because, yeah, like I said, the one yeah. I, I created the other one out of. Mm -hmm. Scratch right. last year, which was fine. Right. They were great. The ones that she mm -hmm. put up, it was like, yeah. oh, oh my god. And maybe I could. Yeah, that's collegiate level. We're down. Maybe kind of I'll like contact here. her because she's sort of on again, off again, out of retirement, right? Yeah, she's <laughs> not in retirement. She's not. No. Okay. So you you do the research and let me know when you're okay. ready to present. That sounds great. Board goals for the year, um, Paul. This was something you were going to discuss. Uh, what we wanted, so uh, for the board goals, we have all these policies and whatnot, and um, we review them on this reoccurrence every year, every uh, meeting. We have a new one that we so, as an example, we're going over what ELC 2.7 or mm -hmm. 2.0 this time and 2.8, and so we always do that. But do we want to have? Last meeting we talked about uh, we were un kind of unhappy with some of the policies, but we didn't, when we go over the policies, we're looking at more of the um, lanes portion of the interpretation and the rationale and evidence to support it, but we don't actually go over the policies. So do we want to set a goal of looking over certain ones? Are there ones that jump out at us that are not developed um, how we would like? Are, are we okay with how, 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 how they are currently and um, we're just leave them as is? But I, I kind of got the feeling at our last training, um, our last meeting, we kind of had some policies that we were kind of questioning the wording. So it's kind of an open-ended board policy review. Do we want to review the policies? And how? Sure, why not? <laughs> All right, so how would we want to, if we do want to, do we want to just take and say something like one month we're reviewing three? So policy title 3.0, mm -hmm. 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4. 3 so you would come prepared to the meeting to discuss any changes you want to see in policies three. So that would mean all of those, not just 3.0. Okay. Does that make sense? So instead of like we do with, with Lane, instead of breaking them down by individual policy, just take them into groups. Mm -hmm. um, executive limitations, board management delegation, and governance process. Do you, does that sound like that's the feasible way to do it? Or? Yeah, why are we doing this? Well, each time we come up with training, you ask a lot of questions, and then we go, why are we doing this? And then we kind of have disagreements about what is written 
And so it was kind of a way to force us to discuss them and get them to a point to where we feel happy with them. Since we wrote these a long time ago, they haven't been updated. And, right. um, they were adopted in 2016, but mostly these were written long before that. And usually right. three to five years is a good review. Right. So. And we haven't done it. And really the question is, is kind of how? How do, how do we want to go up? Do we really want to take the time and do uh, by each individual policy, or do we do it by groups, chunks? How, you know, what's the consensus? I don't know that there will be a lot of change, but at least the opportunity to. How were they written? Were they written it with, with a model of some kind? Were yes. They, yes. The Carver uh, gave us a Carver model. They yep. gave us yeah. a whole bunch of examples, templates uh, yeah. from others. But as mm -hmm. you saw, Val Gardner, when she put up her, uh, they've evolved drastically mm -hmm. since we developed these. And we've never evolved. And so perhaps it goes kind of hand in hand with what yeah. you find mm -hmm. out. Maybe we, we put it off until we find out more information. But it, these are very elementary mm -hmm. compared to what what Val kept showing us for policy, you know, 2.1, boom. It was a lot more in depth mm -hmm. than what we've got. Maybe we don't want that. I, I, I don't know. But right. a yeah. lot has changed since we developed these. I think some of the reason that they stayed so elementary is that we were very, there, there was a lot of effort and energy that went into each and every word pretty much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm As not it, disagreeing. No, I'm I just, just saying, I'm not saying that it's necessary. I think it's a good thing that we should go over them. Exactly. Um, just going over them doesn't mean we have to change no. them. It's, there has been a lot of evolution. Do we want to include some of that right. in our language, or are we happy with it? But and, and looking back over the last few years, could we have avoided any troubles if we had changed, if this had been more specific? Yes. And if is that something that we could anticipate happening again if... We don't put as the, the metaphor was always, you know, you're you want your finger in as few bowls as possible. Possible, they're like mixing bowls and they're stacked, and you want to, you know, how many how many mixing bowls in do you want to put your finger in to control? Do you want to you want to leave as much freedom of movement of those bowls, but you know, you know which ones if they fell out, which would you know. So, I mean, what I hear you saying, though, is that, you know, I, this is not my expertise <laughs> at all, right? Not and quite. so no, it would be very helpful, I mean, to even start to consider changing these is to see some of those other yeah. policies. Like, where, what exists, other people have already created and are using them. I think we would benefit us to have mm -hmm. those to okay. use, you know. Mm -hmm as a template or as a, at least a sounding board sort of to, as a reflection of so where we might go. perhaps the goal might be to, uh, for this year, is simply uh, gather material from other schools and, uh, that are using our policy governance type model. Right. Um, uh, so gather material so that we can be prepared for um, a more in-depth look. Policy review, study. yeah. Yeah, review. I think that's that, a I mean, I don't think, I don't know why, why we couldn't be that. I mean, mm -hmm. Or go for the year. It's going to take us a while to get all that here. And, and when we do it, I like to write the idea about doing it by groups. And then mm -hmm. if we come to a certain policy that, you know, 2.1 we'll has more issues, then we can go into more depth. But if we don't, we'll we can on. move on. Right. That's, that's a good idea. You know, if there isn't any questions, everyone's in agreement, there's no use of spending the time to do it. But if there is more questions, we can spend the time where we need to. Mm -hmm. Just as a, a recommendation um, piece is that uh, since we were just talking about kind of the, the budget for uh, the board um, is, you know, maybe build a little extra into the budget. Um, typically, if you're starting out on a project like this, um, you get a facilitator in for the first meeting or two just to kind of show you the best way to, to move it forward. And then after you feel comfortable as a group, um, you know, continuing the process that they've set up and you can just kind of do your own thing. You don't need the facilitator anymore. But it might, might be worth, um, if, you, if you decide that, to, to plan on having a Val or somebody come in just to facilitate the first two meetings for you. That's a good um, idea, and she would have access to some of these materials yeah. that would be harder for us to access. Well, the first, I mean, the first person I'm going to ask is, we, we have this going on to this 
I'm not leaving that topic, but uh, <coughs> the policy side committee, we're meeting with um, Sue of the VSBA mm -hmm. on, on a different set of policies. Um, but I would definitely ask her about, you know, who is practicing policy governance and where we can get started, who might be able to help us with that. Um, anything else about the policy review, our own policy review that Paul was talking about? I like Lane's idea about um, you know getting the facilitator. Um, you know, I would say if it's uh, Val, we would maybe perhaps this time ask for the materials of other schools up front mm -hmm. before she comes to. Um, so we have a chance to review it. Yeah. Before she gets. There's been a couple times she's come and we haven't ever seen the material, and so it might be better to get the information up front, front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we could digest it and talk to it. So. Um, do we? Is this something we want to put into our agenda for the fall of having starting this work in a in a evening meeting mm -hmm. outside of the school board calendar? Are people willing to come, you know, and spend a, a three hour workshop or some evening mm -hmm. outside of the school board? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to contact Val? Do you want me to contact Val and just? Sound her out on whether she's available. I can, I can contact Val. Okay. I, I would just need her information if you have it. I, I don't have it. I have her. Okay. Email if, you, if you send me the information, okay. I'll contact and then her. just give her a you know <laughs> short <somewhere. laughs> account of what we really like yeah, out of the BSBA. BSBA. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And six thirty to nine tends to work mm -hmm. okay for everyone, and then it's yeah. two and a half mm -hmm. hours. Do we have a month that we that we prefer? Probably after Don't budget. budget. <laughs> after budget. <laughs> after budget? So in the spring? No, let's Unless do it. Unless you guys want it earlier. Once she gets started. I mean, we could do, we could use her twice. So we could do like a November if we're, if we're up for November. Mm -hmm. Tends to be sort of a less busy yep. month for many people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe. We'll ask you. See how it works out. It's a terrible month. For you, it's a terrible <laughs> no. month? No. No, in oh, general. Right, like, right. On. It's, it's done. <laughs> give me something, give me something bad. November and April, good. like, just Absolutely. whatever you want to right. do. Right. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so in for a policy review. Well, like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Just Make it go away. Busy with budget design. Okay. And <laughs> the last part of our board management is, is the first meeting of policy <laughs> subcommittee, which <laughs> we're still working on scheduling. And um, I did email both Rachel, Lane, and Ashley, who are our subcommittee, um, we have a couple of dates in mid-November, so hopefully we'll meet with Sue then. Since Rachel is free on November, it should be good. All right, EL monitoring. Um, we have the two reports, uh, 2.0 and 2.8, which were in our packets last month uh, for primary, for first review, and um, so today we need to accept them. Um, I don't know if there are any further questions for Lane or any other discussion on either one of those reports. So, you know, we were talking about doing a policy review, but when we do these EL reports, this really should be our time to be looking at our policy Absolutely. and saying, is our policy getting us the information or you know, or do we feel like we're getting what we need from this policy or not? Because in a way, we're almost, re every time we do a monitoring report, we're reviewing that policy. But the policy should be driving our, our focus on, on the actual report. Right. And did you have any questions about the policy as you reviewed the report this month or last month? I, I did go into um, into the OSSD office to look at some of his um, evidence for uh, 2.0, and um, I, I felt comfortable with it. But I don't know if other people have gone and, and asked for further information. You know, I think that really is our due diligence of be feeling comfortable with the information that he is giving us. Yeah, where possible, I'm trying to just put it in the report, but mm -hmm. that was head personnel information and whatnot in there, which is why it was in the notebook. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not always possible to put it right in the body. Um, so does anyone have a further question? Um, 
or something they want to highlight from those two monitoring reports? If not, do I have a motion to accept EL reports 2.0 and 2.8 as submitted last month by Lane? So moved. Is there a second? All those in favor of accepting both reports as written, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We've accepted 2.0 and 2.8. Scholarship investment report, uh, which is enclosed in the agenda. Lane, do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, let me find my notes. I had a couple parts and pieces here. Um, so, for especially for the new board members, there are two scholarships um, that there were sizable donations for, um, and that the the school district kind of maintains on behalf of those donors. Um, the Azel Hall and the community um, scholarships. Um, so every year we do a report kind of to show you where things currently stand in terms of the principal that's, that's still available and kind of what was doled out to the students um, for each class at the, at the end of each year. Um, I did have an opportunity to talk with the, the donors for the community scholarship. Um, one of the things that they're asking um, is that they would like to see that money used up. That's the $2 million mm -hmm. one. Um, mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, the intent was never to have it last into per perpetuity. Um, my guess is I think as they're getting older that they would like to see it used up in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to see an acceleration when you look at the grid in terms of, of what's being paid out on that scholarship. You know, previously it was about 25000 a year that was going out to the students. I think it was closer to about 94000 mm -hmm. this year. Um, and then the other thing to know about that scholarship, especially for the new folks, is that that's a four-year scholarship. Um, so like the very first uh, year, if you look on the disbursement column um, that they gave money out in this, they gave out 22500 mm -hmm. The next year they gave 25000 out to that class, but they were still paying the 22500 oh. for the second mm -hmm. year of the first. So you see the total disbursements on the right. So that's what's going out um, every year um, to account for the, the new scholarship money plus those that are in the pipeline for the four years. Um, and that one has a... a the students are supposed to, when they finish, they're supposed to return 10% of what they receive. That's possible. I don't know. It's rem written in the yep. contract. I'll take a look. Yep. The, and the students sign it. Yep. But I don't know. So this would be the first class. Yep. The 2015 class just graduated. So it'll be interesting to see. So, and they want, they don't. So that means that's going to continue to feed into the scholarship. So. Well, you see that I had a pretty good conversations with them. Um, they didn't mention that they were interested in, in getting the money out as fast as possible, um, as long as the students met the spirit of the scholarship. Right. Um, which well, is, if you read the because yeah. I've, I've it, in the contract, all the kids sign, it says that they're going to pay back ten percent of what they bought. I'll so take a look, and I'll actually Great. ask them about that because if that, that is in there, they, they might be very willing to change that um, at this point in time. They were also willing, they opened that, that scholarship up to all students that attend, um, including the students that are coming in via school choice, mm -hmm. um, which was interesting. Um, but again, they're, they're wonderful, wonderful couple, but I, uh, the, uh, getting a little advanced in age, and I think... I'm not 100% sure, but my takeaway was is that that's what right. the concern was. Right, or you was. might talk with Simona, yep. who does the, the scholarship stuff. Yeah, I'll ask about that. Because um, I do that with students, and, mm -hmm. um, and I think now Kelly Tucker is collecting that paperwork, but the kids have to, they have to hand in that contract that says they'll pay back 10% yep. and there's some other things that they have to do. Yeah. And so it's going to always sort of go over it, a little bit. It's been making quite a, quite a bit of money. I mean, um, mm -hmm. I mean, you can see that overall I think it's about 5% when I was doing the calculations yeah. on it since its, since its inception. Mm -hmm. But it's been up and down, so it's making quite a bit. Um, it's going to be hard to do given the limited number of students we have. You know, even if
if we're giving it to 10 or 15 students a year, it's still not going to make a dent in it. Uh, so. That's Which amazing, okay too. Yeah. What are the requirements for the students? Uh, ba basically, just the, the original. They have to be going to a, to a school in Vermont, a public university in Vermont, or college or university in Vermont. Um, and then they, they have to public, pay. Public, not private. Public, not private. Yep. And they need to pay 10% of whatever they get. And originally, they had to be from one of the three towns, but like I said, we looked them that up. And if it's going to college in state, you know, public college, probably fairly limited on the numbers they can yep. give out. And there, there was a need clause in there. You know, they had to have a demonstrated need, so mm -hmm. uh, that limited it a little bit more. But they, it was funny. They came back, and one of the comments that they said is they, that when you're giving the money out, it doesn't have to be the same amount. Uh, big thing is that we don't ever want a student to ever have to take that's receiving this scholarship ever have to take a loan for anything uh, wow. along the way. Mm -hmm. Probably can. So. Mm -hmm. I hope they all the students are required to write a thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They are. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're just wonderful people. Um, the other one that was an oddity this year uh, was the doing? the Brown scholarship. Um, that one actually, its inception was at least 50 years ago, I think it was 1971, if I remember back. Um, and because it was part of an estate, the way that the laws were in Vermont at the time was the court had to oversee whoever was managing the estate, which is um, People's Bank now, despite all the name changes that have, that have happened. <laughs> so every year the, um, the court requires them to do an accounting, which requires us to do some paperwork as well. Um, what the court did is... Um, on its own kind of filed with itself the fact that it didn't want to oversee that anymore. <laughs> Felt that there was no need to do it, that the People's Bank had done an admirable job with nothing questionable in the 50 years of service, mm -hmm. so that, that paperwork has happened. Um, but that's, that's the only other change in terms of the scholarships. So I also put down the other scholarships um, that were given out. There were 30 other scholarships that were given out um, in addition um, to these uh, that came to $118,309. Uh, so there's, there was... So the district, the district handles the A's in the hall also? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. so. And that one's usually, I think, if I remember, it's 2500 a year to two students, so 5000 a year. Uh, that one sits around 100000 uh, And that one, again, that, that one, the way that things are, have been going lately, that one will go into perpetuity. Um, if the interest rates stay the way they've been the last five years. Huge. Yep. Yeah, these, this is amazing. For students in this district, it's really, it's really awesome. And things are in very good shape. Um, we do have the dual control in place, and Leo um, over at Edward Jones has been doing his job. Whenever a check is written um, to pay for any of those scholarships, he calls uh, and talks with both Robin and I separately um, so that we're both reviewing the amount, making sure that it's right, and then giving him the approval. Unless he gets approval from both of us separately, um, nothing happens. Um, so that was part of the dual control that we put in on it uh, a year or so ago. Thank you. So that's a procedural thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, part of the, one of the Yale reports, um, financial Yale reports the first year, that was the only thing that I noticed, you know, could could be adjusted to kind of get better in line with what the limitation was requiring. So what's the policy? The scholarships? Yeah. Um, that's just a traditional annual report. It looks like the board has always done. So it's not really an Yale it's policy. Not in our Said 2.3 in the might be financial, financial management. conditions and activities, which it would relate so to. So it's really just oversight of the financial health of the district. Okay, can we move on to facilities monitoring report? So the, the report. Be easier if we could get them to you in color. Mm -hmm. um, so to, kind of to remind um, folks of where we're at as we kind of adjusted this a little bit, just to make sure that there were eyes on the ground whenever anything was being purchased or um, whenever work was being done. So what you'll see um, 
anytime the, the work has been completed, if it's got my initials next to it or Robin's initials, the LWM, mm -hmm. it means that, yeah, we've gone out, we've checked the, the materials are physically here um, or the work has physically been done. We've actually had our eyes on it and can confirm that. Um, anything that is checked off uh, by me that's been inspected that's had that direct observation, after this month will come off the report so that it doesn't get confusing. Mm -hmm. um, and then the new work that's completed, I'll go out and do the visual inspection on it. Robin will, um, if I'm not around, and, and, and mark off that it's happened. Um, there are a couple of things that I've, I've highlighted for myself. Um, part of the way down, um, and we already kind of talked about this, but it was just a reminder on the paving and the loading dock repair. Um, the board had approved money for that to happen this summer. Um, we went out to bid. There was one bidder. It was actually the, the person who gave us the estimate that we paid for. Their bid came in about 70000 over what their estimate was, so we said, no, we're not going to do the work. Um, they had made a mistake on the original estimate um, about the cost of, I guess they call it the bitumen. It's one of the materials that goes into the asphalt. Mm -hmm. um, they had done a miscalculation in the estimate. Um, so that'll be on hold until till next year, um, and we'll go out to bid again. We'll try to get get out to bid in February um, and see if we can get a, a better price for that. Um, there is a, a piece on here for athletic field work. Um, it's planned. We're discussing it. Um, what that is is we've never had like a greenskeeper to go out there and actually do real work on the field. What happens with athletic fields over time is as people are, are, are playing on them, um, the soil gets compacted. Um, does two things. It makes it hard to grow, grow the good grass that you want. Um, the second thing that it does is it makes it dangerous um, for the kids. Um, so we're considering at least for, for one year or maybe two, um, potentially getting a, a groundskeeper to go out there and do some work on those fields um, just to keep them safe, um, and keep the grass growing the way that it should. Um, if it gets too compacted and the grass um, starts to die, it's mostly crabgrass out there now, um, we'll end up having to rotate through the fields, and I don't know where we'd rotate the kids to. Have to actually literally take them off the fields for a year, um, have them play somewhere else. I'm sure trying to prevent that from happening. Um, I think ours were aerated yearly when I was in school. Yeah, Same here. there's, there's a yeah. tremendous amount of work that needs to be done. It's never been done here in, in memory, uh, but the folks that are still here and talking to them. Um, work orders this is just interesting to point out so since january um, they've had 359 work orders submitted by teachers um, 311 of them are complete um, they have a, a system called school dude that the the teachers you know put in their work requests into um, the last one for me this one was highlighted for me more for a question was about the fitness rooms um, middle of the year last year when uh, Visbit came in and did its kind of yearly survey to mm -hmm. make sure that things were in compliance. We talked about this fitness rooms or not. Um, they have, looks like they've done all the repairs, um, but I've got to check on this one. I think this was the actual reconstruction of the, um, it's a raised floor mm -hmm. of the, the structure underneath that makes sure that it can mm -hmm. handle all the weight. Um, so I still got to do the visual inspection on that. But they have replaced and repaired all the, um, the damaged actual athletic equipment that's there. They've got some new um, steppers and things like that, which is kind of neat. Um, one that's in progress, which is important, is it's on the last page, third or fourth one up from the bottom. It's the emergency 911, the E911. Mm -hmm. um, we've got to get all the sites set up. Um, some of them already are, but all the sites set up so that when somebody makes a 911 call, um, the services that are responding know the actual room number. It actually mm -hmm. shows up on the call. Um, so that's kind of set up at that the big... That sounds like it would be helpful. Yeah, it's set up at the big schools. They never set it up at the smaller schools because they figured the schools were small enough, but um, the law has changed. It has to be done. Mm -hmm. um, not only does do they need the E911 set up, um, but the number to dial 911 has to be 911. In other mm -hmm. words, it's not 9 to get out and then 911 oh, yeah. mm -hmm. afterwards. Um, so we're working on getting that in compliance. So those are the biggies. Unless there's other questions. Does anyone have a question? Further questions? So let's move on. Um, we need to approve the minutes from the OSSD meeting in August. Um, I don't know if anyone <clears throat> has any amendments or changes or questions about those. 
Um, we also have to approve professional staff contracts. Um, the list is in here. We've got a new pre-tech program hire. Was that the only one? Oh, and then a, yeah, and then a brain tree title teacher. She was already 80%. Yeah, yeah. that's just her other 20. Yeah. So we're going to vote on this, the consent agenda as a slate, and then approve backup check signer in absence of the treasurer. So this was, um, we have the new treasurer, so Teresa Godfrey is here. Mm -hmm. If she is ever out, we still, like if she goes off on vacation, mm -hmm. we still need somebody to sign the, um, the, the accounts payable checks, you know, people's paychecks and whatever is going out to vendors. So you used to have a stipended um, position for that. Um, they called it the assistant secretary. We just need a backup. So we checked with um, the auditors. It is okay if Linda um, performs that role with the board's <laughs> yeah. approval. And then um, we checked. It's about, usually takes between a half hour and an hour um, to actually you know, sign the checks. So we figured $50 an hour. Um, so again, that would be my recommendation to the board um, is to have a motion to put Linda in as that backup check signer um, at around fifty dollars per hour to do the work. Hopefully, your wrist, fingers. Yes, <laughs> Dan. We're ready. Do you need a motion? Well, I am better. Yeah, since so my broken arm this winter. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's approve the other parts of the consent agenda, and then we will um, approve Linda as the check signer. So, I've got. We need to approve the minutes from the OSSD meeting in August and to approve the professional staff contracts. Um, do I have a motion to approve those two things? Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. And now I would need a motion um, to add or to make Linda the, the backup check signer in lieu of the treasurer. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Who was the second? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Congratulations, Linda. No, thanks. <laughs> and I believe there's Thank you, John. the actual bank paperwork. There okay. Side. Yeah, there is in that folder. Okay, perfect. Um, next, we have the superintendent's report, which was enclosed in the agenda. Lane, do you have something to add or elaborate on? <coughs> um, just kind of two uh, new pieces um, to add. Um, integrated field review, we kind of mentioned that that was happening this year. That's kind of like the old accreditation um, mm. that NEASC used to do. The state has kind of taken over that process. Um, I'm just happy to announce that I've got a team together. Um, I had nine people that stepped up for that, um, so I sent the names off to the state. Um, the integrated field review for the district um, should be happening early November. They haven't given me specific dates yet. So is that those people from within the district that... Yeah, that are volunteering the okay. time. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy happy about that. Um, the other piece is the we had talked a little bit about the RES um, shed here. Um, just to give a, a, a heads up that eventually, if it looks like we can get the work done, I may be coming to the board for reserve funds. Um, the initial estimate that we've got is somewhere between $12,008 and $14,000. Uh, but I'll have a, a full solid estimate if and when that time comes, just to okay. give a couple heads up. Are there any other questions that anyone has for Lane about his report, concerning his report? Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, we've got the director and principal's report and a financial report. Um, do you want to give us any heads up about what there is reported there? Yeah, I actually had some notes. Actually, the, the and and the, the the easiest way to say it is the um, the finances are all very good right now. Of course, it's only been one month. Um, there were a couple of things on the expenditure sheet, which is pretty much the the last sheet in the book, um, that show up as negative right now. Um, they're not quite what they appear. Um, it's because that the money has been encumbered already um, and will probably end up being less than what we've encumbered it for. Um, but other than that, everything looks as it should. 
Um, the only one that's a little bit over is repair and maintenance, where it shows the negative 7.17%. Um, the reason that that one is legitimately going to be over is because we actually uh, work with a software vendor um, to maintain our financial data from central office off-site. Mm -hmm. um, we had that ancient, I don't know how old that thing was, that ancient server that was in that, that front room mm -hmm. um, that was so old, uh, they were still using the old magnetic tapes like this mm -hmm. um, to preserve it. And so what would happen is every night uh, Sue would go in there and she would copy all the data onto one of those tapes and then take it home with her for safekeeping um, and then bring it back, you know, God forbid anything had happened to it. Um, so this was just part of the financial piece, just making sure that we're preserving um, our records the way that we need to. So right now, every night, it's uploaded onto the cloud. It's available um, to anyone um, who needs it, who has the proper access um, from any location. And if the building burns down, we still have it. Because so that, that in that case, thing. if the building burnt down, they might not, might but not have been able to find anything to read that tape. <laughs> You're exactly right. I haven't I haven't seen those those tapes since the since the eighties. Was the last time I'd seen them. Then. Oh, so somebody that probably was, had one in the barn around here somewhere. That was an unexpected expense then. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we'll we'll be fine in the end. And in, in terms of the overall budget, I mean, it's a couple thousand dollars. It's a drop. Right. Yeah. Um, I had a question about why the tuition um, from last year was thirty four hundred. 34, almost two, 342, well now it's 290. Is that an unexpected drop? Which? It's on the left, the, the, the just put it's on uh, the revenue, the very top of the yeah. first revenue. It says local revenues, tuition, 342 about. Oh, 341. And then now it's 290. Um, that's currently what we're anticipating. Remember, we're at the start of the budget year. So when we start out, it's what we anticipate. Doesn't mean what it actually is right okay. now. Yeah. Do you expect that number to go up? That's I do. Um, well, I'll have a I'll have a better answer for you um, at the when we do the end report because I pull the enrollments in October. Okay. Um, when I look back, we did try to gauge what enrollments were going to be a couple of months ago. Um, what I saw at that point in time was a steady state at RES and a steady state at uh, RUHS. Mm. Um, but then increases at the two small elementaries right. of about 20 to 40 kids. Um, but that would then, you'd think that there would be more tuition revenue than last year rather than less. Um, it depends on where the tuition is coming from. If I have a school choice student come, coming in, that's worth about 17000 to me. If I have a new student in the elementary schools, because that's not under tuition, it's coming from the state funding, mm -hmm. that's worth about 10000 three. Right, so if I got all my kids coming in if, at the, the, the lower level, I'm, I'm earning a little bit more, but it's not, not, not okay. worth as much as a school choice kid. I guess I would so still it expect an increase rather than a decrease, yeah. but we'll see, I guess, in October. Let's, um, let me, what I will do, which I think because it's an important question, is we'll, if you're willing, we'll revisit it at the next meeting. I'll talk with Robin. We'll get okay. the details. But typically you're anticipating, um, especially this early in the season, what you're expecting. <coughs> Let me actually put that in my notes. Any other questions about the financial reports? Any other additional information, Lane? Mr. Question, like I said, Robin, I always the last question I ask her when I look through stuff with her is, "Do you feel good?" And she's like, "Yep, yeah, it's early. It's early, but I feel very comfortable." Good to know. Board evaluation, Ann? I, uh, oh, sorry, a, go on. I have an incidental information uh -huh. for, for Lane. I have a question though. Yep. Um, last year, a member of the um, community asked about main plates for everybody. Yep. And you had uh, the RTCC guys. Uh, do that. Uh, where, where are we on, on, on those? I ha we have I the actual name plates that I can give you. They, uh, Carrie Hazard's class was working on the um, developing the bases. They were trying out different models, which was kind of neat, but I don't think they settled on one. Okay. Um, so I got to put some pressure on them now that they're getting up and running again to get that done. Yeah. Uh, but we, we do have the <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. on the 3D printer. Um, yeah. cool. So now that the students are back, perhaps we could get, uh, yep. get that accomplished and, and uh, 
Do you want to see them? Us. They're in the back. Community members were trying to figure out who we were. <laughs> And we had that nothing was, identifying. Them. <laughs> that so was at last year's October meeting, you know, so it's right. been a full, we, full year. I think they're in the bottom. Yes, of we all talk that. like we know each other, and nobody's <laughs> everyone's on film and here. And like, who's that again? Yeah, they made a. They're kind of nice. Very city you find them. Gets nice yeah. We got too much else. Of course they do. Oh, oh well. well. That's right. Okay, here they are. Barry. We just need to they, They've kind of they've kind of changed a little bit, but they did. They did the, this is the main piece. Mm -hmm. um, they actually did this on the new laser cutter. Nice. So it cut it out. Lovely. And then the kids had to figure out how to get the laser to cut at the right depth so that it didn't go all the way through the wood. Um, so this was out of the innovation center. Uh, but as part of the STEM work that the middle schoolers were doing, they were working on designs of the base. Mm -hmm. And they had actually sent some videos out. They had half a dozen um, different little base designs. Cool. Yeah, they oh, never cool. decided on which one that they ended with. But if you've got yours in there, um, we'll have to see. It. Maybe, I'm not sure if they've done one for Brian. And I don't think they had yet, but we've got to get them updated, which is a good point. So um, Ashley, but she came yeah, on before Ashley, Brian. Did. Yeah. So when we talk, we and pull our names out. Yeah, this matter really this matter. There's nobody here. Yeah, so just Brian, I think. Yeah, but they can Ooh. still feel the see on the. <laughs> you don't get a name. You just get a. You just get a title. Um, <laughs> you're use oh, it's, it's you. Yeah. You're gonna have to sit in the information. <laughs> yeah. No name, just title. Yeah. Oh, well, you just put it in cover like this. <laughs> Or you have to hold it up when you speak. That's right. right. There you go. Towards the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wayne. Yep. Say Paul. No, Paul. Go, it goes with it. It goes next to it. Oh, there's another yes, there's there's a chair there. somewhere. It's probably in the there back. There it is right there. Okay. Paul Parker. Right there. Yeah. Okay, and how about our evaluator? How did we do? I think we overall commendable and we, between commendable and met our best expectations, I don't think we had any significant um, detractions from our accepted decorum and behavior. No, we didn't. Good. We didn't yell and scream at each other. We didn't, we didn't <laughs> bully we each other. So we're all good. <laughs> all right, and we got done with the main part of the meeting at eight eighteen. Um, so we are going to have an executive session.